today we have uh, our featured artist, uh, but the uh, exhibit is opened about two days early. <laughs> Hooray! Thanks to Hannah actually being able to be here and help with the installation. We just hung a lot of paintings yesterday. Um, Hannah Sobring is a Danish-born, Danish-educated artist who for the past three years has been living in New York City. Um, uh, her art uh, reflects kind of both periods of, of, her, of her life, kind of the more recent uh, New York-inspired experiences, but also uh, her Danish, um, Danish roots and, and connection to especially the, the island of Mans being born home. So she'll speak about her art and, and what, it, you know, what it expresses through her life experience. And then uh, we'll have an opportunity, um, if you have time, to then enjoy the exhibit and see the pieces in person. So to give you a preview on the screen before you see what's actually on canvas, Thank you so much, Tolan. And all very welcome today to this uh, round that lunch lecture. It's so lovely to see so many here. Um, here in Iowa and Elk Horn. I just came myself a couple of days ago and like Tova told you, um, we hung all the paintings yesterday. I drove all the way from New York City to here, together with my mom, in a big car with all the paintings. So it was so wonderful to go through the whole landscape from the city on the east to here to the, to the Midwest with a lot of good stops on the way and then arriving in this amazing landscape that looks exactly like Northern Jutland, where I'm from. And that's really a wonderful experience. We live a little down the street and just going through the fields here every morning has been amazing because the city you have nothing like the native landscape, but you have it here, so I really understand uh, the whole immigrant story coming to here and settling here because it really looks a lot like, like Denmark, which is wonderful. Um, but yes, I'm, uh, I'm very honored to be here. There's a couple of photos from yesterday. I, I thank Tova, Brandt, and also Peter for helping with the whole installation. Uh, but also I see John Mark Nilsson here today, uh, the former director of the museum that I know from beforehand. And I'm, I'm very happy to have been invited to exhibit here for the next, uh, to be exhibiting here for the next three, four, four months until the end of October. Um, and I, I love the mission of the museum celebrate Danish roots and American dreams. Uh, so I'm happy to be part of, of this, my Danish roots and my American dreams for the next uh, four months uh, here with my paintings at, at the museum. Uh, like Tova told you, I'm born in Denmark in 1978. I'm born in, uh, I'm born, I'm, I grew up near to uh, the, the, the blue star in the northern Japan part, uh, or also near to Olbo, which is uh, Himalayan, and again, which really looks a, a lot like this landscape here. Then I studied a couple of places in Denmark and Aarhus, but lived in Copenhagen for many years, and then you see the, the red dot out in the, in the right corner of the landscape of Denmark, and that's Bornholm. Uh, that's where I had my studio for yeah, for many years, my art studio. That's where we have a, a summer house where I've installed a studio so I can be there and paint in, in, in the light of the, of the nature in, in Bornholm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. That better? Say something. Hello. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, but I have, yeah, I've, 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 I, I was born and raised in Denmark and have had my studio in Bornholm. And then as Tova just mentioned, in the last three years, I've been living in New York City, uh, where I have had a lot of exhibitions and where I have, I have worked uh, for the Danish National Gallery uh, with a, a, a small organization, a friends program to raise awareness for Danish art the US. So my my art is I'm a painter, so when you go see the exhibition afterwards you'll see all the, the paintings on the 
wall. Um, and then my education is art history uh, from the university. So it's basically art in my whole life in, in many directions. And then I work in New York City with my own art, but also for the Danish National Gallery with this uh, French program to exchange more Danish art over here from the collections in Denmark. I chose to bring this um, small quote that I will read for you uh, because it's uh, it's one of the quotes that also appears on my webpage and it says a little bit about my, um, my philosophy, you could say, of, of painting. So here goes. The Pearl of the Baltic Sea, Bornholm, is the home of my inspiration, my brushstroke and my special light. Summer after summer, I have been sitting in the rocks, the grass, by the sea, in the sand, but most of all in my studio in Guglien. Now my studio is in New York, but I still paint life stories, relations and moods in the light of the sun, the moon and the stars and the city. Human figures move in and out of my canvases, large, small, young and old. Everyone tells their stories and is part of the Nordic senses and my Danish culture. And to say that in some other words, uh, and when you go see the paintings, you will see that it's very colorful paintings, uh, very abstract in the feel and when you, when you write, when you look at them. But then when you look closer, you will see all kind of small figures, like figures conscious of people, of people interacting with each other in different ways, people meeting, people saying goodbye, uh, as it says here, uh, all ages, all types, but all about relations and interaction. And it's basically what I find is most important in life. It's actually human interaction. It's all about people connecting, having a story with each other, families and friends and work connection and colleagues and everywhere you meet people and you you have like good experiences and ups and downs in your life. And that's what I try to express with my paintings. Positive, vibrant colors, but within them it's all about those interactions uh, with people among each other. The the former director of the Danish National Gallery also once put some words towards what I'm doing, so I thought I'll bring that quote as well and try to read that and afterwards I'll elaborate on that as well. Her name is Alice Hill and she was a director until like six years ago in Denmark. Anna Stöwring belongs to the young generations of painters of Bornholm, the small coastal town Union on the far away island Bornholm in the Baltic Sea has been the home of her studio in most of her life. She catches the invisible moods and transforms the impressions to lyrical, light-filled sceneries full of sensations. Her paintings are really like a kind of romantic dream pictures, a piece of nature poetry in wonderful turquoise and icy blue, white, pale, yellow and bluish green, wine red, purple and soft violet, and grayish green nuances where the shapes are only vaguely visible in the dusk, taking on the colors of the night sky of the summer. The titles of the paintings suggest that she focuses on human life and solidarity and nature moves. She tells stories of compassion and passion, caresses, separation, awakening, and dreams, hopes, and miracles. So that's another way to express what I just uh, told you. So when you, when you look at the painting, you see all these uh, nature colors and strong colors, but all interacting and having these groups of figures within. And hopefully some of you might relate to them as stories from your own life or stories from, from other people's lives. That's uh, 
definitely some of my inspiration. It's basically my own life, but also hearing everyone else's stories gives you like inspiration to to paint all these feelings one has through life. And I even have a small quote from Tuba, <laughs> because Tuba also wrote a little bit about uh, my paintings uh, preparing the exhibition. Washes of blues and greens swim across the canvas. Human forms are anonymous in their features, yet universal in their emotions. In one painting, sunshine and misty clouds seem to coexist. In another, bold reds and yellows pulse with the energy of urban life. So you definitely have a range of, of colors in, in the painting. And that's been really, really wonderful today also to talk to, to some of you arriving here that, that um, you've expressed that there's it's like strong colors and it's very vibrant and that's just so lovely when you enter the museum that you also this time have a colorful uh, exhibition going towards summer time. So I thought of bringing a couple of the paintings here at the screen while we're all connected here. And it's poss possibly it's difficult to see the details while you're very far at the back. Um, but then I'll just um, I'll just ask you to go to the exhibition afterwards and <laughs> and look at all the paintings nearby because then you'll definitely see the details. They range in, in, in very different sizes. Some of them are small like this and some is like 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 huge canvases. So you definitely have different experiences by going and looking at it. This painting is called Vibrant Crespuscule and in Danish it's Sitwamen Skogren. It's that time of day where you have like the sun is almost going down and you have that special light and you're together with your loved ones. This is uh, also the the painting that you will see uh, connected to the show when it's described in the different medias of the museum and there's some postcards and magnets and stuff out here to buy but it's uh, it has this Nordic light that we have chosen to call the exhibition and it has as you see this vibrant scenery of the special light of the day and then the figures and the people within having their relationship or their connection to each other. Do you have another painting from the same, the same time you could say of day? It's, it's called Light Leading into Night and Awakening into Day. And it's in Danish, Natten Street Snow Day in Rome. So that's a, in the morning time, you could say, when when, when the sun is almost coming up and you again have a group of people together. Here you also see a, a woman with a small baby in her arms and, and again the special light and the, the, like the, the light the light colors, the blues and the purple and the yellow. This one, Enduring Starlight, Diana or Edith, and you again see different people interacting. Somebody, when they look at my paintings, go near to them, and, and it's really wonderful to be close to other people looking at your artwork and having all the feedback or their impression. One time, I, I was at an exhibition, and somebody came to me and said, Oh, this is. This is almost like when we met and, and had our first child and, and then you see the starlight and the night around them. So those romantic uh, landscapes or dreamscapes or what you find in the paintings often also expresses what you've experienced in your own life because you have these 
uh, relations and these people interacting with each other, which could quite as well be their yeah, overview. Again, you have this blue and turquoise and yellow, and again, you have this Nordic light. Here, the road of life, if it's light, you almost see a path going into the far distance and a small family on, on their way. But you also see different other people having different connections to this couple of being past or present or future connected to them. It's a, bit, it's a little bit stronger in its color scale compared to the, the last ones. And here, I moved to New York in 2014 and suddenly bright red became part of my color range. This is called Flood of Love, Overflow the Cardinal. And again, you have different stories, but you also have this bright yellow and this bright red. Yesterday, Tova and I talked about, um, the, like, hanging the, the show, we talked about this development of colors, and I said, well, I think it was because when I came to New York, suddenly Times Square was there, and suddenly the vibrant city, and all those colors so strong, everywhere, and I was used to, to of course, also Copenhagen in Denmark, but Bornholm is very much a, a rural town and an island and has nature all around you. So this city and all the colors just made a big impact on me, and suddenly the, the color range changes. This is the beauty of the earth. You once spoon them. Again, you have that very, very strong color scheme compared to the first turquoise and greeny ones, bluish ones. Uh, but again, you have the people and the relations, and you have the nature being part of it. And here, I even think some of my inspiration also, if you look close to it, you'll see a, a, a big scaled woman seen from the back with her neck and her hair like taken up like this. But seen from the back with her neck down on the shoulder. And I've been working a lot with the Danish National Gallery in Denmark with an artist, Wilhelm Hammershoi, who paints a women seen from the back all the time. He uses grayish color scale and not at all red like this. But I think some of the inspiration of all the work that I've done with Bill Hammers I suddenly interacted with my own style. And here you see the city enter the paintings. I didn't bring uh, to this exhibition uh, the cityscapes that I have painted, but I, I brought a couple of them to this presentation just to show you how the city actually influences on one when, when, when you are an artist and you and you take in all the expressions around you and then and then it comes out as vibrant uh, brush strokes. Here, Brooklyn Bridge and the people still and the light, but Brooklyn Bridge became part of the work. And here you see the whole skyline. Uh, in a New York Minute is the painting's name. It's still in the vague grayish and yellow have some of the figures and the relations, and then you have the whole cityscape with the Statue of Liberty in front, and even the Brooklyn Bridge, and we even see Christ the Building Empire. So that's a complete other um, tone of work, you could say, that, that, uh, that started popping up in my uh, paintings. And then, um, moving to New York, I also found out that a lot of uh, a lot of people when they go see an art show, in, they interact with the paintings and they have this feeling of wanting to connect to them and even see some of their own story. But some also just really would like it to express their life story. So moving to New York, I actually was approached by different families, Americans and Danes, asking me if I could do this painting-wise in terms of making life stories that actually reflected 
their life. So I started to do a little more commission work um, living in, in, in the city. And I've done quite a, a bit where I've been really spending time with the family and hearing story, ups and downs, when they met, the kids' stories, um, and all like big experiences through life, values, main values, big travel experiences, all that that really makes one's life or the family's life. And then I've gone to my studio trying to make all these stories and all these impressions uh, transfer into colors and transfer into these small uh, groups of experiences and people and relations that I then have as impression for from having spoken and interacted with with this family that has asked for permission work. So that's been really, really interesting and also a big development to suddenly move myself from my studio and my own stories or the stories that I've experienced uh, throughout my own life and then into this interaction with other families' experiences and then and then painting them and see the reactions afterwards. And luckily, it's all been good. <laughs> and I've had only happy, happy, uh, happy, happy customers, you can say, or happy people who bought my artwork afterwards, which has been really nice. So I call it Artists You Live It. And it's really about, yeah, artists also to have on your walls, and it's also to interact with it, and if it even reflects your life, it might give you another feeling when you look at it or when your family look at it or if you visit us and um, looks at it because they probably see what you what you see or what you uh, expressed to me when I did the, the artwork. So I placed a couple of postcards as well as on your table so you're very welcome to just take them. They all have all my information and stuff as well. And this is just a couple of quotes from some of the people that that I uh, commissioned artworks for. So, yeah, my family too has fallen in love with the paintings. It is as if we are all part of them. She is capa capable of translating impressions and moods and stories into vibrating lines and poetic brushstrokes to beautiful personal paintings. And another couple, we commissioned Hannah to unite the marvelous light of the Baltic, the nuances of the sea, our beautiful summer house with our family life. We studied the paintings with joy and are excited about her ability to express our feelings. So that's like another angle on this uh, painting story and of, of my, um, my way to express. So that's what I wanted to tell you on the on the painting side, you could say, on everything, and and I really hope that I mean I'll go to the exhibition after this uh, small lunch lecture, and I'll be there. So you know, if you have any questions when we when we are there, you just ask me, and of course you can also ask all sorts of questions here. But I also thought I just wanted to explain a little bit. Now that I'm here and I, all, I know that you're all connected to Denmark, I talked with a lot of you that it seems like almost all of you have ancestry to, to Denmark eh, in parents and grandparents and, and, and further back and I think that's just eh, amazing. So I just wanted to present shortly what it is that I work with with the Danish National Gallery just so you have an impression of what that is um, also. That's the National Gallery in Denmark. If you've been to, to Copenhagen, you probably know Statens Museum for Kunst, which is in the middle of Copenhagen near to Rosenborg and the Botanical Gardens. And it's for this museum that I, I work back in Denmark as well, and they also, it's for this museum I also work with exchanging more Danish art over here from their collection. Uh, so just shortly, so um, the National Gallery, State Museum for Kunst, um, is 700 years of arts and a big collection of 250,000 paintings that cannot be displayed 
all the time, all of it. So what the museum really wishes to send it out to international exchange exhibitions as well. And that's what we, we are doing like in the whole world, but also uh, very much in the US. So it's a museum of, of 170 employers and 450,000 visitors per year, where 38% is international guests. And then many of them is or are uh, from the US. So we are just part of, you could say, a range of uh, American friends institutions. Um, like, I mean, this museum, of course, is very much uh, working with uh, the Danish American Connections. And we work with the Danish American Connections, you could say, in, in another way. But as a lot of the other European museums having like a branch over here to be able to exchange uh, more art. Um, so I just wanted to read the mission of AFSMK. Uh, AFSMK is an organization and a friendship scheme that aims to strengthen ties between the American public and SMK. It's located in the heart of Copenhagen and AFSMK creates opportunities in Denmark and in the United States for people to broaden their understanding of and deepen their ties to Danish art by experiencing, participating, and supporting the collection, exhibitions, and activities of the museum in both countries. So it's all about, like I said, it's all about awareness and exchange and different partnerships. So if you're interested in knowing more about that as well, there's a website. Uh, and you're definitely welcome to, to look at it if you have this special interest in the Danish art, strengthening more back. And we also, you know, do collaborations with other museums over here. Um, so it's quite wonderful. Last year, we did a Wilhelm Hammersfeld exhibition, starting in New York, going to Toronto, and then to Seattle. To Seattle. And that was Hammersheim I was talking about just before. You see here females seen from the back, and you have like the neck and the and the uh, and the shoulder, and yeah, that suddenly popped into my the inspiration as well. And then I just wanted to mention that we work on a big exhibition on another landscape artist called Lauritz Andersen Ring, L A Ring. And we hope that will be possible to show that exhibition here in the US uh, in a couple of venues uh, in late 18 and in 19. So a little further ahead in time, but we're working very much with the, the National the Museum of, um, of Nordic Heritage Museum in Seattle, uh, who is opening up a whole new museum next year. And here you see landscapes from Denmark everywhere and uh, and that's one of the exhibitions. Another exhibition is a golden age drawing exhibitions exhibition further away in time in 2021 and we're working right now with the New York institution the Metropolitan Museum of Art to be sure and be able to show that and in that work we've connected to different collectors, the American collectors of Danish Golden Age art in New York that will actually lend out a big part of their works to the exhibition. So it's interesting how you see all these Danish American connections in all the cities around in the US because of epic ancestry history. Yeah. So I I don't have very much more to say other than I found this photo on on the internet the other day and I just love how the US is full of Danish flags because <laughs> we are everywhere and uh, and that's really what I've experienced by being here in the US for three years is that there's such a heartfelt warmth towards Denmark and towards Danes and all of you who all have Danish ancestry uh, all have those connections within you and I think it's so wonderful to be from Denmark and come over here and then experience all this history and all this fondness there are to to uh, to this history going back in in time to this ancestry that everyone has that, that goes back to Denmark. So yeah.
So I just noted some different uh, web pages, and my own web pages, the AFSMK web page, and then of course my email. If you, you know, are interested in in more dialogue towards the paintings or the mission works or other thing, you're always welcome to write me. And then I, of course, don't know if anyone can have any questions, but I'm right here and I would definitely be happy to answer. Do you want to I have an Yeah. You mentioned you have another book. Yes. <laughs> That's lovely. Well, um, yes, yes. If I reflect back, um, what I think is is most uh, uh, prominent, or what is most like uh, my, when I look at my paintings, is the strong colors, and it's the Nordic light, and it's all the interaction with people within. Um, and it's always difficult to say yourself what you're inspired from, but because I've studied art history in so many, many years, um, I naturally uh, see some things being reflected. Now I saw suddenly that Hammershoi in some way influenced me. When I was younger, I traveled a lot in southern France, and I went to all these beautiful museums of Matisse and Chagall, and, and those uh, early modernists with very colorful and especially an artist, uh, Chagall, uh, who has all these different relations going on between figures as well in his paintings, somehow have influenced me. It's not something that I've been aware of in terms of, oh, I would like to follow this and this or this direction. It's something that has like suddenly entered my sphere of inspiration, and, and that's how it suddenly comes out of my hands near the brushstrokes. So there's definitely some inspiration there. Then I also very much like a famous painter. Uh, I don't know if you know him, he's called Odo Hust, and he's a painter from Bornholm. He's actually very abstract in his color field as well, but he, he has uh, mostly nature landscapes with him. But he has these very vibrant brushstrokes that's going on all over the field all over the painting, all the canvases. And when I look at my artwork, I also see all these like um, vibrant brushstrokes of, of strings that hold the, the motive together, you could say. So I definitely also see some inspiration from there. Uh, not that I was aware of, but something that has like entered uh, my paintings uh, in, in the development of the that was a good question, <laughs> but difficult to answer at all. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. I, I work with acrylic painting, yes. Uh, and I basically work with acrylic painting uh, because it's, um, I find it easier to mix the colors and make them that very light or, or very dark that I want, uh, that I want to because I, have so many layers, but like that special light has to go through the layers. And if I work on oil, which I tried several times, it tends to be a little too heavy for me, and a little too, uh, I, I have a difficulty in like mixing the colors so that you can see through the layers. And uh, so that's why I stick to acrylic and watercolor. I've done some um, acrylic and, and uh, acrylic, right? Yeah, I've done and watercolors, uh, but never uh, in big scale. Just more sort of, I actually draw a lot as well. When I was younger, I, when I visited cities, I always sat down and I drew buildings and nature landscapes and stuff with just pen and, and paper. And then I used the watercolor afterwards. But uh, nowadays, it's mostly the really <coughs> Anyone else have any questions? Yes? <coughs> I will be here until Sunday. Yes, and I look so much forward to the opening on Saturday. 
uh, with the bonfire and the jazz music and the picnic in the garden. And I hope that the weather stays like this because this is that's obviously always best for a bonfire if there's not too much wind or too much rain. But I'll be here definitely. Are you all ready to look at the art? Or one more question. <coughs> okay, hi. Yeah, these people are in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 But it was portrayed like the depth was my interpretation of the earth and how we can do it from a selfish perspective. And that was probably the closest that I felt that you might have gotten us to be more sadder in mm-hmm. our other ways of life. Yes, I will repeat the question so you can all hear it. Um, no, but it's um, it's a really good question about uh, my color range and the feeling uh, that they express is because they're so bright and light in the colors, and that you have a, like a certain positivity and a, and a certain uh, up uh, upbeat in the paintings, and not maybe the side of life that is more uh, cloudy or uh, towards the end of life or like a, a like another uh, side of life uh, which is always also part of life and um, I, I think it's a really good question because um, uh, we all experience ups and downs in our life and of some reason my color scale they tend to always be in the light um, scale. And a lot of people have told me through my exhibiting career that, that they are very positive and very lyric and that um, and that they have this uh, yet some sort of a happiness. And somebody also asked me at some point to to uh, if I could look into new beginnings or or like look at other sides of life. Then somebody had also in this race told me that some of my painting has like another almost like a spirituality over them. So so the part of life that you um, that you might see in some of them that has this um, like all like all the steps in life also towards the very end of life. Somewhere they it appears uh, differently but maybe more spirit, spiritual within the paintings and I definitely must say that I I have I have um, I have mostly uh, paints in the in the light color range. Um, not that I haven't uh, experienced ups and downs and and losses and and stuff like that in my life. Um, but of uh, of some reason, they they tend to have a like a, a, a like a, an injection of something positive to more lift up than than uh, take down. Yeah. But it's uh, it's a very I, I love hearing um, and getting feedback and having um, yeah having feedback on on what other people experience when they look at my paintings and and it actually inspires me a lot uh, as well in terms of the government. I I like that. (laughs) I saw your t-shirt as well (laughs) which has a nice uh, quote on the front and yeah. Yeah. What does it say? <laughs> Having a dang good time. 
And uh, yes, um, at least I I I I feel that that what you express and what you put into, a lot of people does that, but what you express and what you put into, um, what you present to others, if that has somewhat a, a tone of being positive, I think it actually almost can reflect back on the person that looks at it. So it's definitely one of my aims with my paintings that I try to tap into like the positivity and and the the upbeat in life, um, and uh, and that's why they're so vibrant and colorful when you when you get closer to them.